In this video, I want to talk to you about the pros and cons of going ball bearing. So this is a Mitsubishi ball bearing cartridge and here's a journal bearing one. So the main pro is that it does spin a lot better which helps with the spool up. Uh, you'll probably see these pretty soon but more about these uh, any, anyway in the future but right now we, this is kind of our prototype this is the first one we made and I'm working on get uh, making more of those but uh, here's the uh, journal bearing so it's really I mean it doesn't really spin as well but once you got oil going to them it will spin a lot smoother than that but anyway so the main pro is that it will help your spool up but the other thing to keep in mind is it really depends on your engine size whether you really need it need ball bearing or not like ideally ball bearing is more more uh realistic for like smaller engines and motorcycles and stuff like that like uh, another thing is like snowmobiles like I have some customers that are making like 500 horsepower in snowmobiles and um, Well the other thing it's just like the cool factor of having a ball bearing turbo sometimes it's hard to get parts for them in Some cases sometimes they're really hard to rebuild too like the GT 37 R series and uh, Yeah, pro yeah, the GT 37 R series is the hardest one to do I think the GT42 is probably a little easier than the GT40, but the 37R is so hard to rebuild just because the design of where the pin sits. And um, so the other thing is you can run a lot larger exhaust housing with the ball bearing turbo and not worry about spool up because your ball bearing makes up for that. But uh, also, if you run a lot larger exhaust housing, you can make a whole lot more power and you got a lot more horsepower capability. But also, uh, since you have a larger exhaust housing, you lower the EGTs too. So there's like so many benefits to it. And uh, so as far as like if you should uh, get a ball bearing turbo, things to keep in consideration is what engine size you have what size turbo is ideal for your car and uh, what kind of horsepower you want to make so example for my car so 2.5 liter inline six cylinder wanted to make for like 450 horsepower I don't need to go ball bearing for that it's really in my opinion kind of pointless it's just an added expense that I really didn't need to do for it so for mine, uh, the ideal turbo that I wanted to build is like a 60 dash one. So around 60 millimeter, like I could do like a 35 R or something like that. But anyway, the 60 dash one may make sense to me for a turbo build like that. It's actually the 60 dash one is actually overkill. But the reason why I would go with the 60 dash one is because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to choke the engine at higher RPM. So you could have a turbo that's good for 400 horsepower, but you got a six cylinder that's making 200 horsepower stock. Well, it's pointless for you to put on a turbo good for 400 horsepower that's really small. Like this turbo is good for 400 horsepower, but it will choke that engine at 6,000 RPM. Like you, you might get to 5,500 and then it'll feel like it's just not making any more power. The reason why is because it can't pass the exhaust pressure through the turbine wheel, so it's choking it on the exhaust side. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is uh, like with the Evos and stuff, we got like 60 millimeter bolt-on turbos and stuff, and uh, we haven't had anybody say that they've been laggy, like the 25G. Well, actually, I did have somebody say it was laggy, but he has a massive boost leak, and he blew the turbo up in three days because... <laughs> He wasn't making any power, so he just kept on running it harder and harder. I'm pretty sure that he burned a valve up and it went through the turbo. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, that's just another thing to keep in mind. Like the bolt-on turbos, they haven't really been laggy, especially with the twin scroll. It hasn't been a problem. So most of the time when the turbo is really laggy, it's actually because the turbo is 
way too big or in some cases it's uh, that you have like a massive boost leak or something and you need to do more about boost leak, leak testing if you haven't already searched that because that's like the most common problem. Like usually the turbo is not at fault, it's like a boost leak issue. But anyway, so yeah, definitely learn about boost leak stuff. I need to do some videos on that, but I haven't yet. So I'll try and put something out sometime in the future. As far as the ball bearing rebuildable myth, uh, I have to say it's, it's not really true, but it kind of can be. The main reason why somebody would tell you that a ball bearing turbo isn't rebuildable is because sometimes they get so bad that they have to be replaced, like the whole center cartridge. But I can get all those parts new, so that's not even a big deal. But the problem is, like, most of your common shops, they don't want to sell you parts like that. They want you to do the whole service and charge you, like, $800 to do it. So with us, I don't mind if you buy the parts. So I'll even show you how to do it. I don't really care. But I do make some money off the parts, but I teach you how to do it, and I help you save a lot of money. So there's benefits for us both ways. So a big ne negative of running a ball bearing turbo is that if they do go bad, like really bad, if the bearing cage comes apart, then all the balls and stuff can go to your oil pan, and it can be detrimental to your uh, oil, like your oil siphon. It can block up like the oil siphon if you're not careful. I think a lot of the times the balls and stuff just go to the bottom of the pan and kind of sit there. But if your ball bearing turbo fails, what you need to do is clean the, the drain and the oil pan before you uh, put a new turbo back on it. Because otherwise, it's potential that your siphon can uh, suck up some of the old debris and cause another failure. And the time when it can cause a failure is it could damage your oil pump, which could damage your whole engine, not just your turbo. So just, you have to be careful of that. So another thing I want to talk about is like real ball bearing versus fake ball bearing. So some of these like fake ball bearing turbos, they'll have like these skateboard bearings or something in them. I don't really know that much about them. I really don't think they're that good, but uh, I did have one that came here, and I didn't really think it spun that good, but that was just me. I had somebody else say that they were pretty good, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, here's a, a Garrett uh, ball bearing, and these things definitely spin really well. So we try and stay off the Garrett design if possible. I know for the, the whole set design, or I mean for doing a whole set ball bearing turbo, we're definitely going to have to use like a GT37 R cage or something different like that. That's something else we're trying to come out with in the future. But, uh, yeah, other than that, like, I mean, there's some supposedly ball bearing stuff out there that's not really that great. But, like, this one, uh, this has, like, a, G a Garrett style cage in it. It does really well. However, we, we still gotta, we still gotta run that and see what it does. But, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind, like a quality ball bearing turbo versus one that's not so quality. But, uh, what questions do you guys have on whether you think that you should go ball bearing or not? I'd like to hear it, and hopefully I'm able to answer some questions that you may have had.